Hey, what's up everyone? I'm back. This time I'm going to be working on my Windows machine because recording on a VM was not very performant and I just felt like things were getting buggy and laggy. It was getting in the way. So I'm back on my Windows machine, but it's all bit basically the same. I took the code that I've been writing so far and I put it up on GitHub and then I cloned it on my Windows machine and npm installed everything and it all works so it's literally exactly the same now i want to get started on assertions so um in the last in the last video we were talking about um the reporter we had right mocha awesome and how uh, now we can get good like pretty looking feedback like visual test results that look good and are easy to understand but there's an issue though it's none of that means anything because these tests we've been writing they don't really do they don't really check for the kind of errors that we want they don't they don't assert that certain things are true and that's really what you want out of a test is to assert for each step definition that something is true that for example here that the opacity does change and that uh, it becomes blue or here that once you submit an alert does show up and these things just have to be either true or false all right without those when we run our tests node selenium mocha they have no idea what we want from our tests so as long as there are no errors in the, in the code no bugs then it will not throw any error so for example let's talk let's talk about this right here luckily we have a wait command so it's going to wait for this to be true but if if it's not true then it will actually throw an error and we'll know why but that's only because we have this wait command here but in general we're going to want to assert a lot of things and we won't always want to use waits the way we're going to assert things is by actually calling an assertion so First, I want to show you what I mean. Let's delete this wait. Let's delete. Oops, let's delete this. And um, okay, yeah, that doesn't matter. But let's just say that we said, hey, get the get the the CSS value, the opacity, and then you know, return that the result equals one. All right, well, let's do that. See, it passed, even though we said return this, but it does, that's not, like, it's just gonna return something, even though it's, it's false, it doesn't know that that's that that's actually a, a failed test case and that's why we need assertions we basically need to translate this sentence here changes but an opacity uh into a like this sentence is something that the humans can understand that i can understand the developers can understand but then we also need to write the code version that our test suite can understand and so it can say oh, well no actually uh the opacity did not change to one. All right. So let's uh, let's do this. Node has its own assertion library, and that's what I'm going to use in this video. And you simply call it like so. It's just assert because it comes. It already comes with Node and it just has some basic assertions and you can check them out here at the node.js website on their api assert and you can see the different methods here now we're not going to look at everything i'm just going to check out uh, the most basic form of assertions we're going to instead of doing this return that we're going to say assert result equals one okay and now let's
let's run our test actually let's do three let's make it fail first the, the opacity should be three see that failed because it's an assertion error it's not just a, a bug in our code it's actually an assertion error and it says assertion error um, what was expected was actually false so now if we do change this to one it passes the assertion passed all right this is useful um, for, for example, comparing text and making sure that the text is what you want. We can do that here. Let's run an assertion in here as well. So we'll say um, after this, we'll assert that, I forget what it says actually. So thank you. We saved your email address with the following ID. All right. So then let's assert that here. We'll find um, find element. And we'll say by CSS. And it was alert success. We'll get text. Then we will assert oops, result equals. Uh, Well, whoops, did not mean to start crying. Well, since the text actually changes every time, see it changes to this, the, it's gonna get the text and it's gonna do this whole thing. And then it will, it will throw an assertion error because each time the ID here that's generated will be different. Let's check out. Let's check out node equal not strict equal. Let's see what does that mean. Strict in a print test strict in a flying. Okay. It's truthy. No. Well, here's an example of why the Node.js assertion library is limited because we would want something to contain. We would want, for example, to assert that result contains something, but there's no method for that here that I see, right? I'm, I'm not being blind, am I? No, but other assertion libraries do have that functionality. So, um, so instead of that, instead of asserting the text, we'll, we'll do this. Assert, and instead of getting the text, we'll just assert that there is an alert success because, well, that's actually what the step definition is here. Sub submitting email shows an alert. So does it show an alert? And for that, we're gonna use find elements because if you use the find element, it's gonna look for the exact element you want and it's only gonna return the, the web element. But if you do find elements, it'll return an array and then you can get the length of that array. So we'll 
insert that result length equals one because there's just one alert success we don't want more that would be a bug too and uh, the thing is you can also add a message so and that's the message if there's a, an error so we'll say we'll say uh, There was, we'll say, oh, I'm drawing a blank here. We'll say um, result length. say something descriptive like that now let's see what happens so that worked and if we if I ask for two alert successes See, that didn't work. You know, I just realized something, and I'm very sorry. You cannot see what's going on on my main screen. <laughs> okay. So, because the when I fire this up, the browser fires up on my primary screen, and I'm working on a secondary screen. So, I'm going to have to fix that real quick. Driver. We'll do uh, manage. Window. And we'll say set pos set position. What uh, what I love is this is is that it just shows you like all the methods that actually come with it. Um, and you have set position. You can set the size too if you want, as 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 you can see right there. And the x axis will be uh, just leave it at zero. But then for the y, let's do minus six hundred, and that means that. It's gonna spin on my browser on my main screen, but then it's gonna jump up. It's gonna jump up like to to this screen, and I can maximize. Actually, no, I don't want to do that because the the browser just flashes on the screen because these tests are so small. So, so now let me do this again so that you can see the browser. So let's see the error and one, I forgot to do the space here. Uh, one alert successes were found. So we wanted two in our assertion, right? But that was just to show you. So that's an example, a basic example of assertions. You can actually also just do it like this. One. assert equal you can specify the type of assertion you want so for this since it, it was just um, we just wanted to assert that something was equal we could just use the, the operators the the equal sign but if we want to assert like different things then we'll start using these methods of assert but let's run this again let me do like three failed ok 
Okay. And we don't even need this message. We just want just want to see if it's if they're equal to each other or not. And they are good. All right. Now let's uh, let's add one here. Let result equals one, and we'll add the same thing here. We'll add it here and find elements. And now let's run our test. Pass, pass, and pass. So now we're a little further ahead in in making a proper test suite because now we have proper we have a proper test suite, proper test definitions for each step, and each step has an assertion that will assert that something is true, that will assert that the definition here is true. And that's basically it. And this was just using the basic node assertion library. You can check out the API on, on their website. Um, it's, it's always useful to check out the documentation for these things. And um, in the next couple videos, I'm going to talk about using something like Chai. And, you know, Mocha and Chai, are, it's a very, they're very commonly used together in the software development world. So we're going to look into that, but we're also going to look into improving the structure of this suite because right now we have these assertions kind of mixed in with, um, uh, you know, in these, in these callbacks and these, with these promises and everything. And I don't like to chain them like that. What I want to do is separate these and have them on their own line down here. And I want basically to store the necessary elements and variables and then compare them in the assertion. That's going to require, in order to make our test, test suite readable, it's going to require that we actually abstract a lot of this logic away from our test file and put it in a separate file. And that's, that's how we're going to start learning about page objects. Because on a big app, I mean, I mean we just tested three extremely basic things here. But on a larger app, um, this is just this is just not okay. Like you can't you can't just start writing your test out like this. It's it's gonna be messy, hard to maintain, and um, it's also not business friendly in the sense that if you have maybe a supervisor, a manager, or just somebody that's non technical trying to keep up with what you're doing, and they want to just jump in there and and have a quick look then uh, this will just mean nothing to them. So we're gonna, I'm gonna start talking about page objects and I'm gonna start writing methods in a separate page object file that we're gonna call into our step definitions and it's gonna make things cleaner and it's gonna make assertions also more to the point. So that's it for today guys. Thanks for watching.